Hey guys, Jared here, and today we're going to see how well a $20 graphics card performs in recent games to help you determine how much value second-hand hardware might have for you. I've got an AMD 5870 graphics card here. I picked it up from a local seller that told me that the card was already second-hand, so I'm its third owner. The last guy also mentioned that it ran super hot, so he replaced the thermal paste not too long ago, so hopefully that helps me out here. Originally I bought the card as a temporary replacement as I was having issues with my 6990, however I've been using it for a few months now, and thought it would be worth sharing with you how it performs in some more recent games to see if it's still usable. If it does well for just $20, then it's a steal, so let's find out. The system that I'm running it in has a quad-core Intel i7-950 at 3.07GHz and 12GB of DDR3 memory at 1600MHz. You'll have to trust me when I say that this was awesome hardware in 2010 when I bought it. The SSD is a slightly newer Intel 520 series 180GB drive, otherwise the whole machine is close to 7 years old now, while the graphics card itself is from 2009. I've seen similar machines going for real cheap online as most people upgraded from this sort of stuff ages ago so hopefully it should give you a worst case idea of how a cheap card can perform. Alright, so let's get into our benchmarks. In GTA 5 I've disabled VSync and ran my test with FXAA on with a 1080p resolution using DirectX 11. With these settings I was able to get an average of 56 frames per second. I usually run with MSAA set to 8, however with these settings I was getting 1 frame per second. So yeah, probably leave that one off. Regardless, it still looks pretty decent and was actually playable. In The Witcher 3 I usually use the Ultra preset with VSync and Nvidia Hairworks disabled at a 1080p resolution. With these settings I was able to get an average of just 15 frames per second, so not really playable. With the medium preset things improved slightly to 26 frames per second, and with the low preset it increased to just 30 frames per second, so barely playable even at low settings unfortunately. In Shadow of Mordor with ultra settings at 1080p we averaged 64 frames per second, so again like GTA this one was actually playable with good settings. I kind of expected this though, as on modern graphics cards I can easily pass 100 frames per second, no problem. Now onto the benchmarking tools. While a useful indicator, note that these results are less practical compared to the real world gaming results previously shown. I also run these at basically max settings, so I can compare them to other tests that I've done. Sure, we could get better results with lower settings, but I don't think there's much point doing that with benchmarking tools. Obviously it's worthwhile doing with games though, so you can actually still play at a lower frame rate. In Heaven Benchmark, with the quality set to Ultra, Tessellation set to Extreme, and Anti-Aliasing set to 8 at 1080p, the 58 70 averaged only 12 frames per second. Valley Benchmark did a little better, with the quality set to Ultra in anti-aliasing on 8 at 1080p, the 5870 averaged just 23 frames per second. I ran both the Firestrike and Skydiver benchmarks from 3DMark and got pure graphic scores of 2940 and 10381 respectively. I'll leave links to the full results in the video description. Great, so it sounds like the card runs alright, especially considering the price. But how hot did it get? With an ambient room temperature of 18 degrees Celsius, the card was idling at 57. While gaming and during benchmarks, it peaked at 81. So it's quite a hot card. The guy that owned it before me wasn't kidding about the heat issues. So what did you guys think of the performance from a $20 graphics card? While this may be hard to reproduce as available hardware will differ in your area, hopefully it goes to show that second-hand hardware from generations past may be worth a look at. There are some decent graphics cards available for a low cost, which can still offer an acceptable gaming experience, especially if you're prepared to turn down the settings a little. Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments and if you're still rocking some old hardware, and leave a like on the video if you found it useful. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for future tech videos like this one.